Welcome to the AI Theater at RSNA 2023. My name is John Greenhall. I am Vice President of Research and Development at Phonar Corporation. I am delighted to have this opportunity to share with you our real-world experience with SwiftMR from Ayers Medical. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. I hope you will find this presentation enlightening, whether you are a radiologist, MR technologist, business owner or manager, or an AI vendor tire kicker. The upright MRI may be unfamiliar to many of you. The patient support moves with three degrees of freedom between the planar surfaces of a non-superconducting dipole electromagnet that has a horizontal 0.6 tesla magnetic field oriented transverse to the patient. The field orientation lends itself to the use of wraparound solenoidal volume receiver coils, as well as planar surface coils, that can be rotated through 360 degrees about the B0 axis. The field orientation and open architecture of the magnet enable static and dynamic imaging in a wide variety of patient postures, such as sitting, standing, and lying down, and in every orientation, prone, supine, and decubitus. Here is our happy patient, seated for a lumbar spine exam, watching the TV behind you. Her arms are resting on a device called a VersaRest that can be freely positioned between the pole faces. A quadrature planar surface coil is behind her. By the way, the idea of scanning a patient in the upright posture, our normal physiological state, is not new. If you look at the very first patent in MRI filed by Dr. Raymond V. Damadian, you will see the happy patient standing inside the magnet in figure 2. You may know what happened subsequently. Damadian built a scanner at Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn to prove it would work. The first cross-sectional image of a human body was painstakingly obtained using the Fonar technique. There are two things to note. Demadian's graduate student Larry Minkoff was scanned upright, and the scan time was over four hours. When Dr. Demadian founded Fonar to commercialize his invention, he wisely abandoned the idea of scanning patients upright and opted for a lie-down bed. So, when Demadian resurrected the idea of upright MRI many years later, those of us who were tasked with developing a viable product knew we had a serious challenge on our hands. Could patients hold still long enough to acquire a decent scan at this field strength? This is where we found ourselves, between a rock and a hard place. So, what did we do? We address the challenges in various ways. Here's a short list. We use patient immobilization devices, such as the VersaRest. We break up a scan into two or more subscans. We use driven equilibrium to preserve bright fluid signal in a fast pinnacle sequence with a reduced repetition time TR. We work short TR gradient echo and spin echo sequences into clinical protocols. We use breath hold imaging. One of our favorites on the Phonar scanner is Repeat and Replace, which avoids having to repeat all the slices in a scan that has subscans. Spoiler alert! Thanks to Ayers Medical's finely tuned deep learning models, we now have a new tool at our disposal, one that improves image quality while enabling a reduction in scan time, Swift MR. From our point of view, this is a game changer. How do we take advantage of Swift MR? Our goal is to shorten scan time while maintaining or improving resolution. Our approach is to sacrifice SNR, knowing that Swift MR will deal with the noise in the denominator of the signal to noise ratio. On what does SNR depend? Only three quantities voxel volume the number of times the NMR signal is sampled, and the receiver bandwidth. The time savings is mainly in the number of times the signal is sampled. 
Here is what we do, and you can do this too. 1. Start with a set of scan parameters that produces a good scan in the absence of patient motion. Know your margin of safety. That is, how much SNR can be reduced relative to the starting point without compromising a diagnosis in an unenhanced scan. You will buy that back to a degree that depends upon the boost provided by swift MR denoising. 2. Reduce the number of signal averages, NSA, if it is greater than 1. 3. If a reduction drops relative SNR too much, buy SNR back by increasing phase over sampling. If NSA is already 1, reduce the phase over sampling ratio. However, if you can't because the phase encoding direction and wraparound artifact limit the rectangular field of view, consider decreasing TE in a T1 weighted spin echo sequence to increase the number of slices that fit in one repetition time TR, or increasing bandwidth in a fast spin echo sequence to decrease echo spacing while increasing echo train length. Four. Finally, and this is very important, disable default filters, whether they operate on case-based raw data or image data. The previous slide made the point that the SNR you give up by shortening scan time can be recovered by denoising. AIRS Medical Swift MR gives the end user a wide range of choices. Two are shown here, low and medium, to the right of a T1 weighted image that had no filtering whatsoever, what could be called a native or naked image. Now for the fun part. In the following slides you will see before and after comparisons. A native accelerated scan on the left and the same scan on the right after swifting. Our radiologists preferred low denoising, so that is what you will see on the right hand side. An axial T1 weighted post contrast image of an acoustic neuroma. The native image is on the left, the swifted image on the right. A sagittal T2 flare demonstrating foci of increased signal intensity consistent with demyelinating disease. An axial T2 weighted series a T2-weighted midline sagittal of the cervical spine. The acquisition time for the subscan was 38 seconds. The total scan time was 1 minute 54 seconds. A T2-weighted midline sagittal of the lumbar spine. Note the presence of hardware on the anterior side joining L4 and L5. Reduced magnetic susceptibility artifact is one of the benefits of scanning at a lower field strength, as some of the MRI manufacturers here at RSNA will attest. A T1-weighted sagittal image of the lumbar spine. This patient's hardware was fixed posteriorly. The nerve roots exiting the neural foramina are nicely delineated, even in the vicinity of the implant. This 3D MP rage sequence was acquired with in-plane resolution of 1.25 millimeters in 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Look closely at the image when I click the mouse. I think you will agree that SwiftMR's deep learning 3D model works exquisitely. For fun, let's pan through all 142 slices. The gray-white matter contrast is beautiful. We now turn to a very fundamental question, and that is, is there a risk in using Swift MR to shorten scan times by accelerating sequences? Are you going to miss anything? Put another way, does Swift MR meet the standard of care? The following slides compare standard of care scans with accelerated or swifted scans. What constitutes the standard of care? The American College of Radiology MR Accreditation Program is a handy reference. Some of the scans you will see in the following slides were selected from successful submissions. The patients are not the same in every pair. 
but I think you will get the idea. A pair of T2 weighted axial flare images from the same patient. The standard of care images on the left, a swifted image on the right. Note the reduction in scan time. A T2 weighted axial. This time the patients are different. The question you should ask yourself as you look at these is whether you give up anything by replacing the standard of care sequence on the left with the swifted sequence on the right. A T2 weighted coronal. A T1 weighted coronal. A T2 star weighted out of phase gradient echo axial. A coronal T2 star out of phase gradient echo. Same patient. A T1 weighted coronal on the left and a PD weighted coronal on the right. A merged 3 echo T2 star weighted axial on the left and a single echo T2 star weighted sequence on the right. A T1 weighted midline sagittal. Note the substantial decrease in scan time. A T2 weighted axial. I'm going to throw you a curveball here. In this slide, we compare stir coronals in the knee. This time, the patient is the same, but the scanners are different. The field strength is 1.5 T on the left, 0.6 T on the right. Note the disparity in scan times as well. What I did not mention at the outset is that Phonar has a wholly owned subsidiary, HMCA, that today manages 30 physician-owned Phonar MRI scanners in addition to 12 high-field units. In 2022, we began evaluating MR vendor-neutral AI providers. At RSNA 2022, we were very impressed by the results obtained by Ayers Medical with a set of anonymized Phonar patient studies. We had technical discussions, signed a trial agreement in April, and quickly created a set of accelerated sequences ahead of a May 1 launch at a site in New York. The radiologists were sent native and swifted sequences for every patient so that they could make independent judgments about swift MR. Pleased with the results of swifting, native images were dropped from the archive stream one month later. By August, a subscription agreement was in place, and SwiftMR was rolled out in under two weeks to the remaining 28 Phonar scanners that had not been in the trial. For some of you, this may be the most important slide. Focus first on the data in yellow for the first scanner to use SwiftMR. In the month of April, before the trial began, the year-over-year -year percentage change in patient scan volume was 2%. The month of May saw a dramatic increase to over 30%. Swift MR was up and running for the entire month. Now look at the data in blue. The blue curve averages the data from all scanners that were open for business for more than a year. When Swift MR was rolled out to the rest of the installed base in early August, the average increase in same store sales jumped to 15%. Here you see the percentage of sequences, excluding localizers, that were Swifted from April through early November on the lead upright scanner. The figure is zero in April because the trial began in May. By September, the percentage was over 90, and it has steadily increased to 98 as Swift MR was expanded to cover more regions of the body. Swift MR is clearly popular with the MR technologists.
As you shop around for a way to take advantage of artificial intelligence in MRI, here are a few questions you should ask your prospective AI provider. Is your service MRI vendor neutral? What sequence types are supported? What regions of the body are covered? Can denoising and sharpening be used at the same time in the same sequence? Can denoising and sharpening levels be set by sequence? Is the hardware included at no additional charge? Are software upgrades included at no additional charge? Who performs the installation? Who provides ongoing training and support? I will conclude with a few more thoughts from our radiologists. In a phone conversation, Dr. Stephen Winter said, I am really pleased with everything about this. From soup to nuts, it has allowed me to get 10 to 20 more cases done per day. Dr. Robert Diamond summed it up nicely in an email. He wrote, Swift MR has allowed us to significantly reduce exam time while simultaneously improving image quality. The reduced examination time has allowed us to have an increased scan volume of 13% over previous months in the same hours of operation, and the number of scans per hour performed by the technologist has increased by 11.5% without any adjustments in the workflow parameters. We have experienced a significant decrease in the extent of recalls due to the diminished motion artifact and reduced examination times by approximately 50%. Thank you for your time and attention. And goodbye from the AI Theater at RSNA 2023.